Today on Rock the Park. We got a nice size gator right here. Yeah. It's one wet and wild ride. We're swamping now. Try not to step into trouble. Ah, oh. Oh, whoa. Stabbing pain. With danger lurking underfoot. There's an eight foot snake here, so stay where you are. Okay. Wow. And facing down my biggest fear. Oh, wow. And it starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. This is the real deal. And I'm Colton Smith. These Man. are mountains! We've been buddies for years. Always in search of the next adventure. Dude, what was that? We share a passion for our national parks and other wild places around the world. Oh my god. Man. Heading off the beaten path. Pushing our limits and experiencing nature's best kept secrets. Here we go! <laughs> it's how we rock the park. South Florida is a world unto its own. Millions of tourists visit every year for the tropical temperatures and beautiful beaches. The area also encompasses raw wilderness where the animals, some native, some not, far outnumber the people. And that's why we're here. We are out in the swamplands in Big Cypress National Preserve in Southern Florida. And we're about to embark on an adventure that's got my skin crawling already. <laughs> A very crazy adventure. We're on the hunt for snakes, Burmese pythons, very large non-native snakes that are threatening the local bird and animal populations, some that are in danger. The python population down here, it's just running rampant and it's incredibly challenging to really get a bead on how to stop them. We're talking big, big snakes. The pythons in Florida can grow up to 18 feet long and weigh in at over 100 pounds. It all started several decades ago when a few pet Burmese pythons were released into the wild. Now these massive predators are eating their way through southern Florida and the birds, wildlife, and sometimes even the alligators are no match. Snakes are quite fascinating, but they don't belong here and that's the problem. So on this trip, we're meeting up with Matthew McAllister who works on the Python program here. He's gonna take us out on a swamp buggy. We're going out first to explore different habitats and later we'll look for these snakes and discover how the preserve is trying to manage the problem. One thing I know that we're gonna be talking a lot about are these different invasive species. And South Florida has a concentration like nowhere else in the country. This area is grappling with invasive trees and vegetation that are choking out the native plants. But today, we're focusing on snakes, and frankly, I'm a little nervous. Snakes, especially big ones, give me the creeps. Deep down, I'm like really hoping we'll yeah. be able to see a python. Maybe if there's handling to be done, I'll leave that to you guys. Sure. A lot of the risk of the wilderness are, are just a matter of knowing limitations. And so like today, if we encounter an alligator in the water, we're just gonna be calm and the alligator's gonna avoid us and it won't be an issue. Totally. <laughs> well, on that note. Yeah, let's get in there. Always seems like there's crazy ways of getting around down here in Florida from the airboats to these swamp buggies. Pretty cool. These super thick tires and high clearance make it possible to get into places you otherwise couldn't drive to. Before we've gone too far, we stopped to check out some native wildlife. So you can see along the canal, we've got a lot of anhingas perched, drying out from swimming around. Anhingas are large water birds that swim underwater and spear fish with their long dagger-like bill. This must be a good fishing spot. There's a great blue heron, which looks very stately, but can strike at lightning speed when it sees a fish. There'll also be a lot of smaller egrets, your, your green egrets and little oh, blue herons. That, a, that had to have been a gator. That was a gator. That was a gator. Uh-huh. That might be a eight foot alligator, nine foot alligator. This is all fresh water that gets replenished by rain. It helps both the birds and the alligators see and selectively choose the best prey from a distance. Oh. Got a nice size gator right here. Yeah. Alligators have been around for more than 150 million years. There are an estimated five million in the U.S. and a quarter of those live in Florida. How does that relationship work between the gators and 
the pythons down here. Pythons can eat alligators, alligators can eat pythons. Alligators are probably one of our best lines of defense against the python population. This is more suited to some of the species, the popular ones being like white-tailed deer, Florida panther. Have you ever seen a panther before? Yeah, I do panther work here as well. Oh, really? Cool. How like rare is it to see a panther? I think it was maybe six years before I saw one on the ground. Wow. Today, there are fewer than 230 panthers left in the wild in southern Florida. And because pythons feed on the same prey, like raccoons and rabbits, and the occasional deer, that's putting added stress on the panthers. I love how this thing can just plow through this water. Oh, we gonna check something out? Yeah, we're gonna walk up this strand and just see what we can find, and then I believe there might be a dome to the north of us. Cool. Let's get Perfect. Out. You, you ready to get wet? I'm ready to get wet. Get... Oh, yeah. How deep are we getting? Oh, man. <laughs> So right now we're headed to a cypress dome and we're uh, waiting to see if we can get a, a good look at it. Cypress trees sometimes grow in circular patches and form what is called a dome, where the water level is usually less than three feet and fluctuates depending on the time of year. But before we even get close, something suddenly takes Colton down. Ah, oh. What's up? Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa. stabbing pain. We're swogging through alligator and python infested swampland in southern Florida's Big Cypress National Preserve when I take a painful step. Ah. Oh. What's up? I don't know. Step on something? Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, here, here, can you hold on to me? What happened, son? I don't know. Oh. Are you sitting down? Yeah, I have All to. Right. Okay, so nothing bit me, just something sharp worked its way into my shoe. He's delicate. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts so bad. <laughs> so is this right here, is this a cypress dome? It is. You can see here that the cypress are a larger size class than the surrounding. You know, it kind of tapers off like a hill. It's actually a circular depression where the water gathers. In the middle, where there's more water and more fertile soils, the trees grow taller, giving it a dome shape. Let's check it out. I'm actually stoked to get in there. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh wow. Wow, yeah, this is so cool. So there's a soft shell turtle right here? The Florida soft shell turtle has a shell made of cartilage covered with leathery skin, and they use nostrils at the end of their long snouts like snorkels, poking them out of the water to breathe. You see him walking? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. His head's right here. Another time of the year, you'll see him out on the banks of the canals and they'll be digging nests and laying eggs. Gotcha. man. I think one thing that is fascinating is the water. I mean, look at how clean. People are very surprised to see when they visit this sure, farm. Yeah. They're anticipating muddy, dark water. Big Cypress Basin, as it's operating now, is primarily rain-driven. It's very slow-flowing, so it won't hold much sediment. It all settles out. One of the things that I just love is how pretty it is in here. And the cypress trees themselves, I just love that shape from like the really slender trunk to the wide base. This flaring of the lower trunk, called a buttress, helps provide a firm footing in the swamp. So what do we got here? These are a ton of birds. Yeah, my gosh. Those are white ibis. And you'll see some different ones in there. Some will be almost entirely white, and others will have a good bit of brown. The ones with brown still on them are young of the year. You guys have so many birds here. It's incredible. What is it about this area? Well, there's a lot of diversity in water. It can have a big variety, but also it's a launching point for migration patterns going to South America. But now, things are about to get way more interesting and, frankly, creepier as we head out in search of a python. There's an eight-foot snake here. Stay where you are. Okay. Wow. 
We're in Big Cypress National Preserve in Southern Florida, about to head out with Matthew again to see how the preserve tries to track and manage the growing Burmese python problem here. Even though pythons are one of the largest snakes on Earth, they are hard to spot because they hide in grass, brush, and underwater. I know that there are a ton of pythons here in Big Cypress, but it still is gonna be very challenging to locate one. It is difficult, so we have male pythons that we have caught implanted radio transmitters in and released, and we use them to locate female pythons for removal. So really the females are the target due to the fact that they can lay an incredible amount of eggs. Yeah, as they get larger, their clutch size can, can be pretty high. They, they've had clutches recorded at over 100 eggs. Wow. The problem is females are hard to find, but the male pythons can easily locate them during breeding season. So the rangers follow the males they've caught and released. Matthew takes us to a location where they've got a beat on one of the snakes that has a transmitter. There's a animal that's about a half a mile in. We're gonna use the radio and track into this animal. I'm excited, you excited? I'm nervous excited. Okay, you okay. Know. You see how it'd be hard to find a snake in here? Yeah. Pythons are ambush hunters. They stay motionless for hours, waiting for prey to move right in front of them. When they strike, they bite and wrap their strong bodies around the prey until they suffocate. Then they swallow them whole. These animals prey on pretty much everything around. You know, your birds, your reptiles, your mammals. We're pretty concerned about what we stand to lose. Well, on that note, okay, let's try to find this guy. Oh, I bet this snake's within 10 yards of us. 10 yards is close <laughs> for a huge snake. Is there any way for us to, do we just look for something moving or will we never see it? It won't move, you won't see it. Just hang tight. There's an eight foot snake here. So stay where y'all are. Okay. If you guys want to come over here, it's somewhere in this vicinity, but I can't see it. Okay. All right, I see it. You see him? Yeah. Oh man, he's got it. This is so nuts. So if you'll get to about right here. Okay. So can y'all see the snake? Burmese oh python. Gosh, that's huge. You can wow. see his skin right from where I'm at. Wow. Oh, that's creepy. We're not going to disturb the animal, but he's probably about that big around. Eight, eight and a half feet. Some of the animals in the lab are the same size. Who knows how many of them we might have walked by on the way out here. We're hovering right over him right now, and he hasn't moved an inch. If it was breeding season, Matthew's team would search the area for females that this male might be looking to mate with. Last year, our biggest female recovered was about like oh that. Oh my gosh. And it was a 17 and a half foot female and it had wow. 73 eggs in it. And that's why it's so incredibly important to find the females. I mean, not only are you talking about a massive, massive snake, but also a snake that can carry over 70 eggs. So you were saying that you have like four or five of these back at headquarters. Is there a way we could go back there and take a look at one? We do. A few are back in the lab for different purposes and we'll take a look at them. As it turns out, the snakes in the lab aren't quite as motionless as the ones in the wild. That is terrifying to me. Oh God. We're in Florida's Big Cypress National Preserve, where we just got a look at an eight-foot python in the wild. Now, we're going hands-on with one back at a research lab. Ooh, all righty. So this is the lab that we're working out of um, okay. with the snake program. And so we've got an animal to check out to see if it's an adult male. So we'll measure it to determine its size. And if it's a suitable candidate, it might go in for a, a transmitter implant. Well. You know, if you guys are gonna get to it, I'll let you uh, do that. Oh boy, here it is. Oh my gosh. 
I know you've you've done this a handful of times, but do you ever get nervous like that? <laughs> They're not too bad. Ooh, wow! Wow! Oh, there she is. That is terrifying to me. Oh God! <laughs> oh, <laughs> holy cow! So I'll keep on the head. We'll measure the animal. We're not gonna stretch the animal with force or anything. We wanna take care of it. Okay, so I'm going for the tail. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow, man. Who? you sure you don't want in on this, man? Yeah, I'm sure. Even by just holding the tail and trying to straighten this snake out, you can feel the strength. So if you could read out that measurement. 95. It's got a two next to it as well? Yep. Yeah, two 295. Meters. So it's almost a three meter snake. Yeah, yeah, yep. correct. You know, that would be close to nine and a half feet or so. Nine and a half feet. But this would be a really nice candidate size. And then we can put it on the table. If it's a male, it will remain in the program. Gotcha. I don't have a fear of snakes to the point of like, you know, being irrational or anything like that. They're just, oh. <laughs> This thing loose, I would be running out the door. All right, well, let's determine if it's a male or female. They have a vent at the rear of their tail, and on either side of that, they'll have spurs. And on males, those spurs are typically much more pronounced. So that animal, for its size, does not have large spurs at all. Uh, so this is a female. Um, this is a female, okay. Yeah, and it won't be suitable for the program. So this snake will be euthanized. Just one small step in curbing the problem. It's a beautiful animal, but you see the size that these can grow to, and you imagine people keeping these as pets and then one day realizing, maybe I don't want an animal this size in my house. Yeah. And that's why we're here. They don't have the heart to euthanize the animal, so they release it into our public wild lands. They're not native. They're not supposed to be here. It really puts to bed the fairy tale of, I'm gonna let it free and have a good life, because in doing that, you're doing something that's incredibly destructive to yep. other animals and entire ecosystems. It's really cool to see what you guys do. And I, I just, I wanna thank you for taking us along and, and letting us experience it. Yeah. It's not as simple as it appears. All, All right. right, I'm gonna touch her. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing firsthand just how hard it is to find one of these snakes in the wild gives us a whole new view into understanding the depth of the python problem and a massive respect for those doing this work. Man, what a crazy, crazy place. That to me was just so different. Eerie, adventurous. Like walking into that Cypress Dome, I just love that environment. To get in there, see the clear water, the beautiful trees, the plants, the flowers, everything. Big Cypress, it seemed like you have these moments of adventure where your, your senses are just so tuned in. And then those moments of adventure are followed so swiftly by just moments of peace. We know that the Python problem here is serious, but we also know that it gets skewed and hyped up by the media. So it was really cool to get to come here and go out with Matthew to see not only how this problem is affecting the area, but also see the beauty of the area as well. To not just paint this place as a place overrun with snakes, but to really appreciate the biodiversity that is here. You're not gonna come here and just see snakes everywhere as far as the eye can see. That's not the reality of it, but it is a problem. It's a very invasive species, and it's something that we need to help with. And remember. Hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.